Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. In today's video we've got a One Punch Man matchup versus Dragon Ball. And we are doing the Dominator of Worlds, Boros versus the King of the World, King Piccolo. This versus matchup will be very different to the previous versus matchup of Garo versus Boros. In this one we're doing a crossover, meaning I have to scale each verse independently, I can't use inverse scaling. This also means that I can also talk about parallels between the characters and levels of how they would compare within each other's verses. So I'm going to bring up things like Boros's minions as well as the children of King Piccolo. Starting off with how strong armored Boros is. If you remember in my Boros video, we went over how Boros's ship is able to destroy City A, the largest city in One Punch Man. And this city takes so much to destroy that it'd actually be a multi-continental amount of energy. We then upscale from the ship to Tatsumaki as well as Boros's generals all around a level far greater than the ship itself. And then Boros himself is even greater than that, to the point where we justified it being a 10 times difference between him and the ship. With that he's still multi-continental. We can also use this to scale Boros's speed while he's wearing his armor because he's meant to be superior to his generals, one of which has statements of being able to remove the friction between objects to move at near light speeds meaning Boros is very likely the speed of light. Once again, if you want to hear more about this, do just check out my Boros video. It's almost an hour long, goes into far more detail. Similar to Boros who's able to destroy cities that are larger than countries, King Piccolo was able to one-shot West City in this fight against Goku. He did so accidentally while trying to kill Goku. However, unlike One Punch Man, we have a map to see how big each city is and they're absolutely gigantic. The ones in Dragon Ball are smaller. Instead of there being 26, there's 43 in Dragon Ball, making each one of them slightly smaller if it was the totality. But we can actually see on the map how big West City is. Much larger than any city in real life, but still not as big as that of One Punch Man. Again, just like Boros, but more directly, King Piccolo actually has guidebooks stating that his attacks move at the speed of light, something that both himself and Goku can react to, making King Piccolo at least the speed of light likely faster. However, if you guys know my channel, you know that I scale Dragon Ball characters a lot higher than just destroying cities on a planet or moving the speed of light at King Piccolo's level. I'm going to go into detail now of why they're even higher than this. In a previous video, we went over how Master Roshi is actually more powerful than Planetary back in the first World Martial Art Tournament we see in Dragon Ball. This is when he destroys the moon but does so so quickly that the kinetic energy is beyond Planetary. He does so with a power level that's only 139. Goku and most of Piccolo's children are more like a power level at 180, which is far higher. And then Kim Piccolo himself, in his youth, has a power level of 260. So it's easy to see why destroying cities is way too small for King Piccolo. He's got far more power than just destroying cities. And in fact, we need to go over exactly how powerful he is. King Piccolo isn't the only one with attack power over Planetary. If we upgrade Boros from his armored form into his release form, we can then talk about how in the One Punch Man Compass, it stated that his latent energy, which is his release form, has the power to destroy entire planets. We can even take this a step further and say that Boros in his release form can do more damage to his own ship than Saitama can. The same Saitama who, when doing his moon jump, had so much kinetic energy that he gets calculated to planet level. If we were to put it into actual context, we say it's not just planet level, but 3.5 times out of destroying planet Earth. We also need to talk about Release Boros' speed. Release Boros gets far faster than it was previously. In his armored form, we mentioned he should be the speed of light. However, Saitama is so much faster than Boros, not only can he hit him from a great distance while Boros reacting, Saitama's not even drawn on the panel he does this, he does it that quickly. We estimated Saitama's speed to be about 4.6 times the speed of light based on this which is consistent with a calculation on Bells in the Battle Wiki. However, Boros later on when he loses one arm into release form, proceeds to outpace Saitama using just one arm, making him at least twice as fast and over nine times the speed of light. I think we're at the point that we can now start comparing Boros to characters in Dragon Ball earlier on and build up to that of King Piccolo. As mentioned, Boros' attack potency is 3.5 times that of destroying planet Earth, and his speed is 9.24 times the speed of light. If we start off with early on Master Roshi at a power level of 139, his attack potency based on my Roshi video is 8.2 times the energy needed to destroy planet Earth, which is faster and more destructive than anything Boros can do. However, if we look at his speed, his attack takes 7.7 .7 seconds to hit the moon, 
meaning the actual speed of his Kamehameha is only about 16.7% the speed of light, making him much slower. The power difference isn't too bad, so Boris would definitely be able to keep up, but in terms of speed, Boris is so much faster that someone at Roshi's level would never be able to beat Release Boris. We'll need to upgrade to a stronger Dragon Ball character, and we'll take a quick pause once we reach the likes of Tambourine, King Piccolo's ideal henchman. For those of you who don't know, Goku didn't actually learn proper key control until the events after defeating King Piccolo, as he went to Kami's lookout and learned it from Mr. Popo and Kami. This means that back in the original Dragon Ball, when he was using his Kamehameha as a kid, he was always doing attacks more powerful than his normal punches. This is shown when he was trapped by Emperor Pilaf, and both Yamcha and Goku are unable to even scratch the wall they're attacking with punches or kicks. However, as soon as Goku tries to Kamehameha out for the first time against the wall, it actually pulverizes a hole. This means the difference between the Kamehameha and a normal punch or kick is bigger than the difference between fragmentation and pulverization, which is over 26 times. This is relevant because the difference between Goku and Mercenary Tao was so large that when Goku did the Kamehameha, absolutely nothing happened whatsoever. This would mean that Mercenary Tao is over 26 times stronger than Goku. This would actually make Mercenary Tao so powerful that his attack potency is over 200 times that of the energy needed to destroy planet Earth. However, in terms of speed to find out how much faster he is, we only know that he's faster than Roshi, that's all we know. Goku was a rival for Roshi before he started training and then before he met Tao. How much faster he is is unquantifiable at this point, so we'll just say faster than Roshi and Boris still has a speed advantage. Now let's talk about Goku after his training with Korin when he has a power level of 180. Goku is so much more powerful than he was previously, he actually reverses the scenario on Mercenary Tao. Being so powerful that Tao's Dodan Rain no longer affects him, much like how his Kamehameha previously didn't affect Mercenary Tao. Goku even points itself to himself directly. This means Goku is now stronger than Mercenary Tao by that 26.75 times difference. Assuming that Goku's attack potency is nearly 6,000 times that of destroying planet Earth, easily in the large planetary ranges. For his speed, we'll need to go into a bit more detail. For speed, I'm not going to beat around the bush and say that Goku at a power level of 180 is actually the speed of light. There are several feats to prove this at this power level, and I'm going to go through the ones I think are most interesting. 100% the most common one anyone's going to tell you about is the feat of dodging the solar flare. In the anime it's more debatable, but in the manga we see the solar flare active and Tien run while the solar flare is active, thinking Goku hasn't moved and yet Goku has blitzed the light and Tien being able to get Master Roshi's glasses. We also have the feat of Goku dodging lasers, which is most consistently shown in the anime, with him doing it over and over again. However, I actually prefer the manga version of this feat, because there's one example where the robot shoots the laser at Goku, and after the laser's fired, Goku still hasn't moved. However, when Goku dodges, he's dodged on top of the building near the robot meaning Goku actually outpaced this very laser and is definitely the speed of light off this feat alone. Another interesting light speed based feat is the fact that when the Dragon Balls split, they go around the world in a few seconds, but before it can barely move, Goku can jump from the ground all the way up to the height of the clouds and pick the Dragon Ball out of the sky. This would just mean that Goku at a power of 180 has consistent light speed scaling. Now let's show some basic consistency to prove that Goku got this massive amount stronger and faster. Let's start off when, when Goku faces the Mummy. The Mummy is a fighter that's so strong that even though Master Roshi knows Goku's improved and is stronger than when they nearly 50-50, he's unsure if he can beat the Mummy. This actually means the Mummy is likely stronger than what Master Roshi was. Now not only is Goku so strong that when he's letting the Mummy hit him with all his strength, he's completely undamaged. When Goku actually tries, he slowly walks up and proceeds to one-shot the mummy. Things only get more crazy from there. Goku's next opponent is the Devil Man. The Devil Man is actually a very respectable character. Not only is he a winner of a previous Budokai tournament, he recognizes Goku's strength for defeating the mummy, saying that no one else has even come this far before, yet he has full confidence that Goku has absolutely no chance of defeating him, despite the fact that Goku literally one-shot the mummy. After this, Goku proceeds to mess around with the Devil Man, even admitting as such that he's holding back. And then when he challenges to actually go all out, Goku accidentally one-shots him. 
This one shot is so fast, Master Roshi didn't even see it happen. Some of you may have a problem with the scaling I've mentioned. After all, in the 22nd Budokai, Master Roshi fights Tien, and Tien fights Goku, and all of them are quite relative when they fight. However, for those of you who seem to miss the important details out, there is a three year time skip between when Roshi was outdone by Goku here, and when Roshi was training. In fact, we know that in this time gap, Roshi was training both Yamcha and Krillin relentlessly so they could be very good for the next World Martial Art tournament, and did extra secret training, especially to fight Goku. So the reason why Master Roshi can jump in power to someone from 139 to 180 is because he did all this training over three years. And in case you're wondering, yes, there is an official guide even showing that Master Roshi was at the power level 180. The picture here is of Master Roshi when he's about to fight King Piccolo, which is a day after the events of the 22nd World Martial Arts War. Now we can finally talk about how powerful Tambourine is. Tambourine is so powerful he was actually able to give Goku one of the biggest losses he's ever had in the series. So we can directly scale him to Goku. Now there is an argument to say Tambourine could be several times stronger based on someone like Yajirobe being tougher than anyone Goku has ever faced before, symbol scaling to Yajirobe and Tambourine being stronger than that. However, in the translation I've seen this also had this same information missing or interpreted differently. At the bare minimum we can just say that Tambourine's are relative to what Goku has. It doesn't really matter because we can now make a comparison between Tambourine and Boros. Finally, we can stop talking about Dragon Ball scaling and actually talk about the comparison between Boros and the people he's trying to fight. Boros notably has a speed advantage being over 9 times faster. What this would mean is, when they were fighting, it'd make Boros 9 times more likely to avoid an attack, which is great for defending himself since he definitely has a power disadvantage. We also know that between hits, since he's 9 times faster, if they were to try and strike each other, Boros could hit him 9 times and still dodge the attack. On the other end of the spectrum, we can look at Tambourine, who is 1680 times more powerful than Boros. That is a huge amount. In previous One Punch Man videos, we've gone over how we'd say that in One Punch Man, the normal strength to one-shot someone is only a 10 times difference. Even with Boros' healing factor, that's a very big jump. However, there's actually something even more important than this that we went over and you probably didn't even realise it. The thing that's even more important was when Goku fought the mummy. If you remember correctly, the mummy was stronger than Master Roshi, which had a higher power than that of Boros. However, the mummy was unable to damage Goku at all. So Tambourine being even stronger would mean that Boros would not even be able to beat Tambourine. His speed is meaningless if he cannot damage him. In other words, we're going to need a stronger Boros. Enter in Meteoric Burst Boros. Now the real battle begins. Meteoric Burst Boros is nothing like his release form. He's way more powerful. When Boros' arm is first shattered, he talks about how he's now releasing his too powerful power. When he goes into his Meteoric Burst, he does something even more impressive. He's beyond the physical limits. This implies a difference between the armoured form and his release form is actually smaller than the difference between his release form and his meteoric burst. We can take this a step further and actually use statements of how long it takes Saitama to do damage to the ship when Boros was bored and didn't care, and compare it to the size of single attacks from Boros on the ship, and we can say that Boros is around 200 times stronger going from armoured to his release form. And that means we can then say meteoric burst is over 200 times stronger. If we apply this to his attack potency, he's now able to destroy 625.8 times the energy needed to destroy planet Earth. If we apply it to speed, his speed shoots up massively to nearly 2,000 times the speed of light. However, we can take this a step further. By a step further, I mean that when Meteoric Burst Boros was first shown, he moved so fast that Saitama was shocked. He then hit Saitama, and Saitama gets launched across Boros' entire ship. But if you look very closely, you'll notice that Saitama still has not reacted to that first punch. This is very interesting because Saitama can off guard and very casually react to the Boros' henchman that was able to move rocks near the speed of light. Yet he couldn't even react to getting launched across this entire ship. In other words, we can use this and say a time frame similar to how fast light would move. Meaning that, in actuality, Boros' speed is more like 6,900 times the speed of light using this speed alone. 
It's even implied that he tries harder later on, so he could be even faster. If we now update the comparison between Boros and King Piccolo's children, we can say that there is still a power gap that is in Tamarine's favour. However, we also can notice it's no longer the one-shot difference of 10 times. We could even go a step further now and talk about how Boros' speed is so much faster that Tamarine would not even be able to touch Boros. If you're wondering how consistent that would be, is Boros the type of person to use that type of speed like that? Someone who's faster than the speed of light and has better speed scaling than Tambourine, also known as a suppressed sight armor, got blitzed across Boros' entire ship. So Tambourine is not going to be able to touch Boros at all. Boros is nearly 7,000 times faster than him. We can then go a step further again and say that if Tambourine was lucky enough to hit Boros, by some means, Boros can regenerate from a splat of blood and he'll just continue fighting on regardless. This means there's absolutely no way for Tambourine to beat the likes of Boros. Let's upgrade up to Drum and Old King Piccolo. To many people's surprise, Tambourine is actually not the strongest child of King Piccolo. Instead, it is Drum. This is because Drum was born after Piccolo got his youth back and shows better feats. For example, taking on Tien after Tien was training relentlessly overnight to try and beat the likes of King Piccolo. Drum was even able to kill Tien if he was just so let's just try and found Tien quite amusing. For quantification of how strong Drum is, we can actually look at the Tribeam. The Tribeam is an attack that uses so much of Tien's energy reserves that it could actually kill him. It is stated by Master Roshi, who's prideful for his Kamehameha wave, that it's actually far greater than the Kamehameha, and it's even stated by Goku that it would have killed him on contact. Despite this, Tien's meant to have a great energy reserve, and yet it could almost kill him. We know he has a great energy reserve because the Mafuba, something that Roshi requires a lot of energy to do, is something Tien was able to practice overnight for 6 hours straight. If you say it takes a minute for each one, we're looking at a 360 times multiply. If we apply that and say that Drum's stronger than Tien using a tri-beam or something like that, we can say that Drum is over 2 million times the energy needed to destroy planet Earth. This is actually 2% the energy needed to destroy the sun. For those of you who haven't seen, that's actually a problem with the scaling I've mentioned. The problem is, if you look at what TM was saying when he was facing Drum, is that he's not scared of fighting Drum himself, but instead King Piccolo. This would actually imply the Tri-Beam or Mafuba is abilities that he would save especially for King Piccolo. After all, if he uses all his energy in the Tri-Beam, he won't be able to use it later on against King Piccolo. This means that this energy shouldn't actually apply to Drum, but instead, King Piccolo. Some possible consistency to show that King Piccolo is at this level is actually the fact that Kami is stated to be able to recreate the moon. It's unknown if it applies to Kami at all times or just when he did so at the beginning of the 23rd Budokai, but if it applies to all times we can use Dragon Ball Z Kami who actually has a lower power level than that of King Piccolo, and the energy needed to create the moon is actually 2.9% the energy needed to destroy the sun. If you're wondering why I say possible scaling instead of absolute scaling, despite Kami having a lowering power level than King Piccolo in Dragon Ball Z, in original Dragon Ball, he's actually stronger when he first meets Goku, as the Goku that beat King Piccolo and has been training with Mr. Popo gets flicked by Kami. Earlier on, we mentioned how Tien was able to use the Mafuba every minute for six hours straight while training to fight King Piccolo, and how his tri-beam would have a similar output using all this energy at once. The number of minutes in 6 hours is 360, so we said he had a 360 times multiplier. This is a little bit arbitrary, as we don't know if he did this every minute overnight, so let's find something a little bit more consistent. And by more consistent, I mean let's use the Ultra Divine Mortar from Goku and find out how much of a boost that gives. Ironically, we actually do know how much of a boost it gives, because Korin tells us. Korin says that it Instead of taking the Ultra Divine Water, what Goku can do is just train for several years. Training for several years should be comparable with Korin when he trains several days. In other words, we can say that the difference here is a 365 times difference, being the number of days in a year. That 365 times difference would then be the multiplier Goku gets from his original power up to when he rivals King Piccolo. Speed things are a lot simpler, thankfully. We know that Tien was unable to keep track of Goku and King Piccolo's movements being too fast for him to see. The last time this happened with an experienced fighter was with Master Roshi, as mentioned earlier, being unable to see Goku after his training with Korin. The difference between Roshi when he blasted the moon 
compared to Goku, who was at light speed at the time, was about a six times difference in speed. This means difference between that Tien, who's similar to Goku at this time, and King Piccolo, would be another six times faster, meaning King Piccolo has a speed six times the speed of light. Now let's compare Meteoric Burst Boros with this King Piccolo we finally finished scaling. King Piccolo is over 3,000 times more powerful than Meteoric Burst Boros. This means if he so far was to hit Meteoric Burst Boros at all, he'd probably kill him. The problem is, Boros is over a thousand times faster, meaning odds are this opportunity would never happen. There is less than a 0.1% chance of Boros ever getting hit, assuming it was all based on probability. However, what about the Collapsing Star Roaring Cannon? If you watched my Boros video, I went in depth on why I think the Collapsing Star Roaring Cannon has star level attack potency. King Piccolo doesn't actually have star level attack potency himself, so this could kill King Piccolo. Problem is, if he was to actually try and charge the Collapsing Star Roaring Cannon, I imagine King Piccolo would probably just kill him. It takes several seconds to charge, and King Piccolo is very ruthless like that. If we were to have this battle play out stamina-wise, it also doesn't go very well for Boros because his Meteoric Burst uses a lot of energy and will tire him out, and if he degrades into a lower form, what's going to happen is King Piccolo will take advantage and then kill him. From what I can tell, no matter how you slice it, I would say the winner of this battle would therefore be King Piccolo. While making this video, I released a poll of who you guys think would win between Boros and King Piccolo, and I've seen to have gone against most people's expectations, since 57% of you voted for Lord Boros. So how about this? Comment down below if you agree with me what you liked about the video. If you disagreed with me, comment why you disagree. Some people are probably going to comment in the comment section down below about how they think King Piccolo is higher than what I put him at. Also, we're approaching 1,000 subscribers. Woohoo! And I'll be doing one of my favourite characters in all of fiction for my 1,000 subscriber special. Also, it will be a Beyond Boundless video. Comment down below if you know who it is. And as always, thank you everyone for watching. I will be making my last versus battle for the time being, being on Godzilla King of the Monsters versus Orochi King of the Monsters, One Punch Man versus the Monster vs Godzilla. After that, I'll be going back to some Beyond Boundless videos. As always, check out my friends Captain Forrest and Corin O'Keefe. I do have a lot more friends in the description, there's just so many I can put at the end of this video. Check out everyone's content if you can. And with that, hope you all have a good day. Thank you for watching.